we're going to be going over some logic and if you can do this it's not hard uh, pretty basic stuff but um, there's just so much you can do with this I mean sky's pretty much the limit here uh, you just got to be creative and it's really fun too uh, but we're just going to start off with a weight at the top and then I'm going to create a new part so new part equals instance dot new. And then I'm gonna tell it that I wanna create a part. So it's gonna know what I'm creating. And then I'm going to say where the location is, uh, where I want it to be. So the first argument is gonna be what I'm creating. The second argument is gonna be where it's gonna be located inside the game. And now I'm gonna set some properties for our new part. So new part dot name is equal to new part. Uh, new part dot size is equal to vector three dot new five five five. Uh, new part dot uh, brick color is equal to uh, brick color dot new, and we actually get a list here. Oh. We actually get a list here of all the built-in colors that Roblox has. I'm just going to go with Scion. If you wanted to use your own color, you would do brick. Uh, you would do color three, and I'm pretty sure that holds an RGB value. Now we're just going to create a bunch of functions, and you'll see how they tie together towards the end. But our first function is going to be get humanoid. All right. Now what a humanoid is? It's not our player's data, but it is our player's mesh model, the character inside the game, and it's their stats. So like health how fast they run, that type of thing. So we're gonna do get humanoid, we're gonna add in a part. We're gonna be passing in a part. Um, and so we'll do local character at first equals uh, equals part.parent. And so why we're doing it, why we're doing this is that when our character touches this part, this new part that we're creating, when our our character touches it, it's not going to. We're not going to have the. We're not going to get the the um, character model. We're just going to get like left arm, left leg, that sort of thing. So, but we want to get the character. So that's why we're doing part dot parent. So in other words, it's like left arm dot parent, left leg dot parent, that sort of thing. And so now we're going to get the humanoid. So local humanoid equals character find first child humanoid now this is a built-in function roblox has created for us find first child and of the name that you want so in this case we're getting the humanoid so what it's going to do is it's going to go through all the children of character and it's going to find the first child that's named humanoid and now we're going to say if not humanoid then return end and that's why that what this is going to do is it's going to keep us from getting bugs in the game if the function's running and it, and it doesn't find the humanoid and we don't have this here, it's just gonna keep running and it's gonna keep giving us errors and stuff. So we don't want that. Now we're gonna just return the humanoid. I'm gonna create another function called drain health. I'm gonna pass in human and I'm gonna say human.health uh, is equal to negative 15. Now let's create uh, another function that is delete player's character. We're gonna pass in a part. And now we're gonna grab our humanoid equals get humanoid. Um, and so what this is, is uh, now anytime we want to get the humanoid in our script, all we have to do is call this function and pass in the part that's all we have to do and then we can get the humanoid but we still got to make sure we don't get any errors so if not humanoid then return end and now what we're going to do is create another variable that has some logic in it so if humanoid health is full so local humanoid health is full equals um human Noid dot health uh, is less than or equal to 100. We'll just do that. And so why we're doing this is because this is going to be it, this is going to make it the code clean. 
is gonna make this code clean. If we have other developers or other people looking at our code, they're gonna know exactly what's going on just by reading it. They don't have to go through all of the logic. So that's why we do that. So, and that's also why we create these little functions as well. And, and so we can put everything together nice at the end. But we're gonna say, uh, if humanoid health is full, then, and now we're gonna call in our other function, drain health and we're just gonna pass in humanoid and yeah and now so now we have these scripts working together we have drain health we passed in the humanoid for our, our drain health function so we have human human dot health minus 15 we also have our um, get humanoid function working uh, so yeah and now we just need to create the event so we're gonna go new part dot touched so now we're creating a touched event for our new part and we're going to connect a function to this event and uh, the function we're just going to call it we're just going to call it and um, we're not gonna we don't need to put any we, we don't need to put uh, these brack extra brackets in here and pass anything we don't need to do that for this function so there we have it. Now let's see what it looks like. Boom, and our player, um, our player gets destroyed, or play gets, gets deleted. Uh, so let's go over it again. Just a wait, adding in a wait to let it know we don't want the script to start as soon as possible. We're creating a new part, giving it some properties down here. Um, and then we're, we have a, our get humanoid function. What this does is it's going to grab the humanoid and return it. That's all it does. And we have our drain health function. All this does is it says uh, the humanoid's health is going to equal minus 15. And then we have our delete player's character function, which is all our functions working together. We're getting the humanoid. We are, here's our logic. So if humanoid health is full, then we're going to drain the health. Um, so yeah, and then at the end here, we are uh, connecting the function to this touched event.